We just went through a little exercise to demonstrate um, the misconception that a lot of people have when we state Newton's third law the traditional way. The traditional way, say, meaning um, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. We saw that most of you, when you do a diagram of the action-reaction forces, ended up drawing the action-reaction forces on the same object, meaning the net force, if those two forces are equal in, in magnitude but opposite in direction, would always be zero. Well, we know that can't be the case. We know that the net force isn't always equal to zero. We learned that those action-reaction forces are not acting on the same object. Rather, they're acting on two different objects. And that's why I like to state Newton's third law this way. If object A applies a force on object B, then object B applies an equal and opposite force on object A. All right, here's my two objects. Here's object A. Here's object B. They collide with each other. They hit each other. Object B will apply a force on A, but object A will apply a force on B. Equal and opposite forces acting on two different objects. If we had drawn it the way that you drew it, the, the way that I was thinking you would, was predicting that you would draw it, and the way that you actually did draw it, then we would have had both of those forces acting on the same object, giving me a net force of zero, which of course isn't going to be the case. Sometimes there will be a net force of zero on an object, but it's not going to be because of the action-reaction forces. They're always acting on two different objects. One of them is acting on A, one of them is acting on B. They're equal and opposite, but they're acting on two different objects. Let's deal with another misconception. Like, don't do this, by the way. Don't hit, hit, don't hit glass, because you cut your hand. And control your temper. Well, let's say you did. Okay, let's say you did. Let's say that glass over there on the side of the, the classroom, that window, let's say that, um, I don't know, somebody got really mad for some reason, and you punched that glass. Let's assume for a second that the glass does not break. Okay, it does in the picture, but let's pretend for a second that it doesn't break. Object A will be my hand. Object B will be the glass. If my hand applies a force, object A applies a force on object B, my hand applies a force on the window, will the window, if it doesn't break, apply an equal and opposite force back on my hand? Yes, it will, every single time. If the window doesn't break and I punch that window, my hand will apply a force on the window, the window will apply an equal and opposite force back on my hand. Do we agree with that? Okay. What about if the window breaks? What if I punch it hard enough for the window to break? My hand applied a force on the window. It broke. Did the window apply an equal and opposite force back on my hand? Yes. It absolutely did. Newton's third law isn't selective. It always applies, whether the window breaks or not. If object A, my hand applies a force on object B, the window, the window will always apply an equal and opposite force back on my hand. Let's go back to this situation for a second where the window didn't break. Let's say I punch the window with a force of 30 newtons. How much does the window punch back? 30 newtons, right? Okay, let's say the window does break. I punch the window with a force of 32 newtons. That's enough to break the glass. The glass punches back or pushes back on my hand with 32 newtons. Now, maybe I was able to apply a force of 50 newtons on the window, but if the window broke at 32, then how much did I really apply no matter how hard I punched? 32. The window punched back at 32. There's a certain breaking force of the window, a certain strength of the window. Okay, if I punch the window at that maximum strength or maximum breaking force of the window, then that's the most I can put, punch it with. And it will always push back or apply a force back with the same value. Always. If I have throw a rock at that window and the rock goes right through the window and to the other side, it hits the wall over there on the other side of the hallway. The rock applied a force on the window. Did the window apply an equal and opposite force back on the rock? Absolutely. So why did the window break if the rock kept going? Well, that force that was applied back on the rock didn't mean it was going to stop the rock. Maybe it was only enough to slow down the rock, not stop it. 
Why didn't the rock break? Window broke, why didn't the rock break? If I applied a force of 100 newtons on the window with the rock and it broke, then why didn't the rock break if I applied a force of 100 newtons back on the rock? Rock's stronger than the window, right? It, it, what we said, Newton's third law isn't selective. Okay, if I punch the window and it doesn't break, equal and opposite forces. I punch it and it does break, equal and opposite forces. I throw a rock through the window and the window breaks, equal and opposite forces. One more, and then we'll wrap it up for the day here. What if, what if a little kid leaves his or her tricycle out on the road in front of their house, and then this big moving van, this like big moving van with like eight wheels on it, weighs like tons, literally, full of somebody's household furniture, comes barreling around the corner at 60 kilometers an hour, way faster than it should be, and smokes that tricycle. How, do the force, how does the force of the moving van on the tricycle compare to the force of the tricycle on the moving van? Is it going to be equal? Absolutely it will. Why was the tricycle destroyed and the moving van not destroyed? Well, because whatever that force was, was big enough to break a tricycle, but not a moving van. In other words, a moving van is stronger. It's the same force, right? But the moving van is just able to more, better able to handle that force. All right? OK, we'll wrap it up there, and we'll pick it up uh, tomorrow. Remember, you have a little bit of homework from those check and reflect questions from earlier today. Let's make sure those are done for tomorrow, please.